This week we're going to look at two really dumb things that have happened in the last couple of weeks, which unfortunately have a medieval flavour to them. Roll opening credits. So, a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to get this one out of the way as fast as we can, um, some people decided they were going to seize Edinburgh Castle under Magna Carta. We're going to get this one out of the way really fast, um, and we're just going to go through these things clinically. So, does Magna Carta apply to you? Well, it's very easy to find out. Uh, question one, are you a medieval English baron? Question two, are you the medieval king of England? If the answer to either or both of these questions is no, it probably doesn't apply to you, and if the answer to both of these questions is no, it definitely doesn't apply to you. The people who decided that they were going to seize Edinburgh Castle under Magna Carta were not English barons of the medieval period. Most of them were Scottish. Most of them were not aristocrats, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, Magna Carta no longer has any real legal standing especially under Scottish law, um, because it was a deal made specifically to grant rights to the barons of medieval England, not to all the people of medieval England, and certainly not to the people of Scotland. Um, so trying to do anything under Magna Carta these days will effectively just get you laughed at by every lawyer on the planet. So don't try and cite Magna Carta as your reason for doing something. It doesn't work. It's been superseded by basically every single piece of legislation since the 16th century. So just don't bother. Stop getting medieval monarchy wrong. I told you it would be quick. What? What were you expecting? It's dumb. It's dumb as hell. <laughs> Moving on. So the th second thing that we're going to do today is thank our patrons, because thank you so much to all of the people on Patreon and uh, on Instagram who gave me lovely messages. Last week's video explains a little bit more. I had to go home. One of my family was really sick with COVID-19, so I was doing a lot of caring and a lot of moving and a lot of traveling and a lot of worrying. So thank you so much for bearing with me uh, and for all of your lovely messages. So thank you very much to all of my Patreon patrons who sent me lovely messages, everybody on the Instagram, everyone on YouTube. Um, all of you guys are amazing. Okay, dumb medieval thing number two. A couple of weeks ago, um, let's find out the exact date that this started appearing in the news, actually, shall we? Okay, so according to what I've been able to find on t interwebs, it happened around the 20th of August. Uh, a magnificent, amazing discovery was made in the town of Granard in County Longford in the Republic of Ireland. At... How do I put this politely? An unaccredited history adjacent tourist attraction? Let's go with that. So basically, this history adjacent tourist attraction, which will remain nameless because I'm not that mean, uh, had a day where people came along and they were doing a Norman type day because Granard has um, quite an impressive Norman mot from the end of the 12th century. And somebody apparently turned up and said, oh, I've got some chainmail in my shed, and the person running the day went, cool, as you do at these sorts of days. But then lo and behold, they came along and brought it, and everybody went mental, because they decided that it was an 800-year-old piece of Norman chainmail, and it was the most incredible discovery ever made. <laughs> Fasten your safety belts. So the first thing that anybody with a smattering of experience of medieval armour will do when somebody presents them with something like this, um, is hold back the smirk. And that can take some practice. This is not a Norman Horbuck for a number of reasons, but let's go through the list of things that we know. Number one, we know that this was dug up in a ditch somewhere in County Longford, not in Granard, as we are told by the person who is uh, acting as spokesperson for this history-adjacent tourist attraction, but in County Longford, and it was dug up, quote, in peat. Uh, found hooked on the bucket of a digger, no less. There are several problems with this. Number one, if this is the case, and it is an archaeological object, Irish law requires that it be reported to the National Museum of Ireland within 96 hours. If you accidentally discover a, quote, archaeological object, which is broadly defined as something of any kind of potential archaeological importance. In Irish law, it doesn't have to be old, it can be 20th century, it can be military, it can be a button from a uniform from 1930 that is of interest, doesn't matter. You, the finder, have to report that to the NMI 
within 96 hours. Otherwise, you are committing an offence. Do that. Problem number one. Obviously, that didn't happen. This has been in my shed for quite a while, which means that this person has broken the law. Problem number two. They were digging peat with a digger, and they just happened to find this, which implies that they were working at one of the peatlands in County Longford. These are really strictly controlled, they're really strictly protected under various environmental laws for good reason, because peatlands are rare and a precious commodity, and they're really important ecologically and environmentally. If you accidentally find an archaeological object in a peatland, you are still obliged to report this to the museum, which implies that if this was found, genuinely, in the peatland, they've broken the law by just carrying on digging, and they may have utterly destroyed an archaeological site. Big no-no, especially for the company responsible. The company who is responsible for this will get into a hell of a lot of trouble if it ever comes to light that they've done this. Which is why the finder's name is not being reported. So problem number two, if this was found just hanging off the hook of a digger, why is it in such good condition? Things that are found on the hooks of diggers do not look as good as this. In fact, things that are found on the hooks of diggers generally look pretty bad, um, especially if they're 800 years old. So this suggests that it wasn't found on the end of a digger in a peatland. This suggests that it has just been in somebody's shed and has never even seen the bucket of a digger. Uh, and that this person is, quite frankly, not necessarily telling us the whole story. Either way, an offence has been committed. If you're digging and you find something, report it. That's how it works. Otherwise, you annoy people like me, who are archaeologists, who have legitimate research interests in the old stuff that you find in your garden. Just because it's in your garden doesn't mean you don't have to report it to somebody. Report this stuff to someone, guys. Come on! So problem number three. If this Horburg was dug up from a peat bog, why does it look like this? Have you ever seen a peat bog? Have you ever seen what a peat bog does to things that have been in a peat bog for 800 years? It doesn't just leave them beautifully clean. So if you've dug this up from a peat bog, it's 800 years old, and it's been sitting in a shed, it shouldn't look like this. It should be massively discoloured at the very least, and almost certainly in... well, peaty condition. So the idea here is that the deoxygenated environment in the peat has preserved this, uh, Horburg in perfect condition. Add to this, peat bogs are highly acidic, so although they don't have the same kind of action as, say, chucking a Horburg into an acid bath and leading, leaving it out in the open air would have, they do have an effect on iron. They do still let iron degrade to a degree. And it doesn't look like this. Iron found with bog bodies in peat bogs has generally turned a much, much darker colour. In fact, almost every piece of iron that we have from the early and high medieval period, if it's not completely corroded into a useless lump like this from Visby, which is significantly less old than the supposed Horburg, if it's not that, it's very, very dark. This stuff isn't very, very dark. In fact, it's not even slightly corroded over a bright orange surface rust, which implies, in fact, it very heavily suggests that this is modern, mild steel, not medieval iron at all. That's problem one. Number three, it just doesn't look like medieval steel. Problem number four is the one that flagged up for every single medieval reenactor. It's butted mail. It's entirely butted. Butted mail is where you take a ring of steel, usually one that's been punched from a sheet, which was done in the high medieval period to a degree, some of the Visby finds suggest that it was done, or it's been made out of a wire, and then all you do is you snip it, you put another ring in here, and you close up the gap. That was done in the medieval period, alternating with riveted mail. Let's take a look at some riveted mail, shall we? So, what I'm holding next to me is the avon tail of my yarm helmet. And this is made from uh, alternating riveted and solid rings. So if you look at them, you can see that we have rings that contain rivets. So these riveted rings alternate row by row with a row of solid rings punched from a steel sheet. 
the riveted rings have all got this round profile to them because they're made out of drawn wire. In theory, made out of drawn wire with a hammered flat section at the end with a hole punched in them that's then riveted through. This is how medieval mail was made, okay? This is what medieval mail looks like. Doesn't look like this, looks like this. But Jimmy, don't we have finds of butted mail from later on? Aha, yes. From later on, we have some finds of butted mail. Entirely butted mail is really, really, really rare, except for in Japan, where a specific type of mail was used. Remember, in the medieval period, mail wasn't just made by a dude with pliers in a shed, like it is a lot of the time today for the mass-produced mail that we see. It was made by a specialist craftsman using specialist tools, like draw plates, punches, and specific kinds of nippers that were used on the rings. Sometimes they even used a chisel to just punch a hole through the ring instead of using pliers. It's an incredibly laborious process, it took a hell of a long time, and it's why medieval mail was mostly worn by wealthier people. Specifically, wealthier men. Specifically, specifically, wealthier noblemen. Specifically, 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 wealthier noblemen who were trained to fight. That is, men who had a good diet, lots of protein, had better developed musculature than your average medieval peasant, and were fairly big. We'll talk about that later. So, problem number four is, again, it just doesn't look like medieval mail. All of this heavily implies that this is a fake, and a bad fake at that. So problem number five, and this is really my favorite problem, because as soon as you see it, you can't unsee it. How tall is the average medieval man? in Western Europe. I'll spoil you, I'll tell you. It's about five foot seven to five foot nine, okay? So average height of a bloke in, say, 1172, when this is meant to be from, about five foot seven to five foot nine. Cool. Um, your average medieval knight, probably towards the higher end of that range, he's got a good diet, he's been trained from birth in heavy duty warfare, he's used to wearing mail, he wears a lot of armor, he's pretty beefy dude. Comparable to your average rugby player today, probably, in terms of how beefy they look next to, you know, your average computer tapping Joe. Look at the size of it! As soon as this photo appeared on the internet, every single archaeologist and reenactor went, huh, no. Except for a few who just did this. This is not a 12th century Norman male hauberk, all right? This is something that somebody commissioned using inches as the measurement when they should have used centimeters, because this is about the length of my shin bone. This is a very, very bad attempt at pulling a fast one, making a quick buck. This is the worst kind of fake, where somebody has just done no research in it, and then the person it was given to has apparently just decided to take it and run with it. If somebody handed this into me at a museum, I would be embarrassed to call up the National Museum of Ireland, but I would know that it was my duty to do so. There is a reason that the National Museum of Ireland's news page has been covering their new entranceway instead of this. But there's also a reason why all of the newspapers in Ireland and a few websites have been taking this and saying, this is a thing. This is a perfect 800-year-old hauberk. It's because it is clickbait. 800-year-old armor found in shed is clickbait. That's all this is. It's transparently, obviously fake. And because I put my money where my mouth is, if any representatives of the National Museum Ireland Archaeology ever watch this video uh, and you've made a statement that states that this is, in fact, a true piece of medieval Norman armor, I'll run another 5k in chainmail for a charity of your choice. Screw it. You won't. And I'm gonna run a 5k at some point again anyway, because I love doing stuff for charity. But this is a complete and utter waste of everybody's time. So that's why, in a really, really tiny, smaller than I needed to make it nutshell, why the reenactment and archaeology worlds are not aflame with enthusiasm for this find. Because it's a fake and it's a really shoddy fake. If you're going to make medieval armor, don't just go, well, they were smaller back then, weren't they? So I'll make it about this big. Yeah, that makes sense. 
like, at least put a little bit of effort into discolouring it properly. Just throw it in the peat for a week at least. I mean, you could have done that, right? You could have chucked it into the peat. There's enough peatlands in Longford that you could have just gone down, literally walked five minutes away, and just put it in some peat overnight, and it would have looked better than this. Knock a couple of the rings out of it, at least. You know? It is just... just Make the archaeologists and the armour conservator pause for a second instead of just taking it in their hands and going, thank you very much, in the bin. Also, if you're gonna do all of these press photos and stuff, don't just hold it with your bare hands. At least pretend that you think it's real. Like, put the effort in, guys. Come on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I wish I didn't have to make videos like this, but loads of people were sending me this link and asking me if I'd seen it. Of course I've seen it. I saw it and I ignored it, but... Now I've had to read all about it, and I've had to look at all the interviews. So thanks for putting me through all of that, guys. I love you all. Diolchin with etam amina. Tantron essa. Who will I'm a troll? Roll credits. Sospan vach and bear we are tan. Sospan vaur and bear we are thaur argath. Where these grapo Johnny bach. Da hi bach. Sospan